Wait, is that a Super Nintendo plug? That's a Super Nintendo controller oh. plugged into a PlayStation 2. Hey, honey. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back. So here we are into Life is Strange. This is our sixth episode of this. Uh, last episode was pretty wild. Is that a Star Wars poster? That looks like a Star Wars poster on the wall. Um, anyways, I said that we were going to start today's episode off by catching up with our journal. We got a couple messages from um, a couple texts from Warren. We're going to handle that. Um, so let's uh, catch up. So previous episode uh, or the previous set of reading we did was in here. Um, okay, so now let's get started. So we are going to start with reading. Uh, get your reading caps on. Uh, so Chloe and I ended up meeting, wait, okay, I'm ready now. Okay. I'm now I'm ready. Uh, so Chloe and I ended up at the lighthouse watching the sunset. Chloe was mellow and told me more about David and his uber paranoia at school and home. It all makes sense. But I wanted to know why Chloe was in that bathroom with Nathan Prescott. She told me he deals drugs and she wanted to blackmail him to pay off some big loan. Oh, we already read this one. We already read this one, right? Snap me out of the dream and I told her what I saw. I'm pretty sure we read this one already. Um, October 8th. I woke up this morning a different person, even if nobody knows yet. After yesterday's intense revelations with my rewind power and saving Chloe's life, among the other cray-cray, as Victoria might say, events at Blackwell, I have to assume everything is different now. And I thought exposing my photos to the world was going to be hard. After Chloe dropped me off back at my dorm yesterday, I tried to find out more about what freak snowfall that uh, happened when we were at the lighthouse, but local meteorologists are stumped so far. I felt so jacked up that I can pull an all-nighter on time and physics research. Okay. Um, not being Warren, I ended up knowing less about my situation than when I started. I don't really think that my tornado vision and the snowfall are connected at this point. I have no fucking clue what to believe. I'm just so glad that Chloe and I are a team again. That what has to be destiny. I do think the snowfall and the storm are linked. Um, now I have to hit the showers and get ready to meet Chloe for breakfast. Lord knows I need it. I ran into Kate in the showers and she had asked for the October Country back. I love that book and definitely need to get my own copy. Of course, when I was in the shower, Victoria and Taylor barged in and totally started ragging on poor Kate about the video. Just to be complete assholes, they wrote the link on the mirror. I truly don't understand how they get off on acting like that. Victoria has everything. What does she gain by being a bully to Kate Marsh? We're supposed to be adults here, but I swear it's like Battle Royale just without the dystopia and exploding heads. Only Victoria could make me feel dirty in a shower. The plot thickens and I can't get out. So after listening to Victoria and Taylor rag on Kate about the video, I came back to my room to find this creepy photo montage. Only Nathan would be this disturbed. The thought that Nathan was in here actually setting up this weird gallery in a way f uh, is way fucked up. I better start being more careful around here. I almost want a surveillance. I almost want a surveillance system now. As if things weren't dramatic enough, I got a creepy text from a private number. Nathan, Victoria, no clue. I really have to start watching my back. I still had to give Kate's book back, so I went to her room. I knew she wasn't doing good, but I didn't know how bad it was until I went in. All the lights were off, the blinds were closed, and it was like some emo goth den. And Kate is the opposite of emo or goth. She was just crying in the dark, and it was so sad to see her like this. More sad is that I wished I could take a picture of her framed in her expressionist misery. That is kind of wild. I mean, I kind of get it, but I kind of, it's kind of wild. Kate admitted that she thinks something more happened to her than just a video. Plus, she told me that Nathan Prescott gave her a ride from the party to the emergency room and she thinks he did something to her, but she doesn't remember what. It's hard not to believe uh, Kate, considering what kind of person she is and what kind of person Nathan is. I've seen for myself exactly what that fucker is capable of. Of course, Kate, Kate asked if she, could go to the if she should go to the police and the principal. I told Kate she should absolutely go to them. Other people could be in danger. But Kate also said she would use me as her backup, which kind of scares me because of this text thread. Should, about, should I be getting this involved when somebody is obviously stalking me or worse already? This is getting freakier than I can handle. Super max, not. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. So yeah, you definitely get involved. I know it's kind of scary when you're getting these threats and stuff like that, but like, I mean, real people, real problems. This is like, this is what you have to deal with. Like, 
You have to stand up. You have to back her up. Like, this, she needed that. Uh, can you just imagine, like, being that person who was like, yeah, don't, you know what? I support you, but don't mention me because I don't want to get involved. I, I know it's terrible what happened to you, but, like, hey, don't, don't bring me into this. Okay. Um, I ran into Warren, or rather, Warren was waiting to run into me. Naturally, he wanted to know what the hell happened in the parking lot with the Chloe and Nathan show. Once again, I felt like a dick because I should have gotten a hold of Warren to see if he was okay after we just left him in the lot. I do owe Warren. I only told him a little bit what was going on with Nathan. The less he knows, the better for him. I would love to at least tell him about my ability to fucking reverse time and space, but ironically, I don't think it's the right time or space. Besides, he would want to marry me immediately just so he could have his own human time machine or capture me for scientific experiments or make me go to the drive-in with him. Oh, wait, he did try to get me to go to the drive-in with him and I refused. I'm not really in the mood this week and I also don't want to lead him on. That's right, I don't want to lead him on. Before catching the bus out to meet Chloe, I saw Nathan talking to David, which made me nervous. Otherwise, I had a nice uh, soundtrack ride to the Two Whales Diner. Talk about going back in time. I haven't seen the diner in five years, but it looks exactly the same. Although now there are way less fishermen and way more dumped food carts than when we were kids. Chloe and I had the best backdrop to play pirate, old ships in a big ocean. Chloe was late, so I was happy to be distracted by seeing Joyce again. The diner is like a museum piece, except with customers. Better still, the food hasn't changed at all. Joyce really se seemed glad to see me again and she didn't give me a guilt trip for not staying in touch. After William died, she wanted to move forward with a new life and a husband. Chloe doesn't want to accept that. Joyce naturally gave me shit for corrupting Chloe with my devil weed, though I'm not sure she even believed it was mine. What could I say? I can see she actually loves David, even if I don't see how. The breakfast was so worth the grief, though. So much drama, and I haven't even finished my breakfast. Finally, Chloe showed up, more bubbly than I would have thought after a night of almost getting killed in the bathroom yesterday. It makes me happy to see her smile, but that smile meant trouble, since all she really wanted was for me to show off my rewind power. So I did, and I have to admit, I felt like a total boss. Except I did start feeling weak and woozy the more I rewound. I even got a nosebleed, which kind of freaked me out. Chloe is always wants more, so she demanded me go to her top secret lair. She still had to get pissed off at me because I dared to answer Kate's call. I'm not a fan of Chloe's petulant side. She tried to make me feel like an ass, but screw that. Kate was so happy I answered, and I actually felt worse for her. Chloe has to know I can have two friends at once. Thank you! Thank you! Chloe! Just when I thought shit couldn't get crazier, Chloe took me to her secret lair, the city dump. Perfect for Halloween, like where the vehicle and appliance ghosts of Arcadia Bay come to rot and rust. Urban dystopia porn. But instead of taking cool photos, Chloe had me do some silly kind of fun gun tricks. Some silly kind of fun gun tricks. Until the guy Chloe owes money to showed up, some skeevy guy called Frank. He demanded Chloe pay him back or else. I was shocked that he wasn't the loan shark I had expected, but I could literally feel his bad vibe. I still can't see how my best friend ended up involved with a loser like Frank. Things got truly crazy when Frank took Chloe's gun, or should I say David's gun? And now we have to worry about one more lunatic after Chloe and maybe me. Chloe really flipped out when she saw that Frank was wearing one of Amber, Rachel Amber's bracelets. That means we definitely have another suspect. This is not how I intended to spend my time back in Arcadia Bay. Uh, hello? Okay, Tuesday, I guess. Uh, after being grilled on the principal's den, I hung out with Warren on the lawn so I could feel the grass underneath my feet and watch the fluffy clouds. He's such a sweetheart. He kept telling me how proud he was that I stopped Kate from jumping. I don't believe that I did, but I have to say it's better to be treated like a hero at school than a twee like than like a twee loser. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 wait. I totally missed some stuff. We totally missed like a whole thing. What happens? Okay, where did I get left off here? Okay, wait. It's not how I intend to spend my time back in Arcadia Bay. After all that drama-rama volume, what is that, 33? Chloe and I ended up walking along the tracks deep in the woods. We both needed to hear nothing but the sounds of nature and wildlife. 
I was shaking inside from our encounter with Frank and through Chloe's fronts tough, even though Chloe fronts tough, I could tell she was shaken too. She told me everything about Frank, which explains why she was trying to blackmail Nathan. It shocks me that the girl I grew up with watching SpongeBob ended up in a scary orbit, in such a scary orbit. Still, I feel safer with her at my side and I was glad we had a moment of peace. So it probably wasn't the best idea to lay down the tracks and wax about life uh, as Chloe's leg got caught in the rail as the goddamn train showed up. Of course, I was off trying to take a photo for my portfolio and then I had another quick flash of my tornado vision. I could see it, almost feel it, tearing the sky apart. My head felt like it was exploding like in that 80s film Scanners. Just as fast as the vision came in, it disappeared. I may be in denial about what it is apocalyptic image, what this apocalyptic image means or doesn't. I'm so sorry. I'm so bad at reading. You guys, you guys got to deal with that. Um, then I heard Chloe screaming for help. And I was shitting kittens. Her foot was stuck in the damn rail and naturally the train was coming around the mountain. I was pretty proud of myself for coming up with a drastic, if not destructive solution to saving Chloe once again. But just in case this journal ever fails to be in the wrong hands, it's going to remain our BFF secret. So there. <coughs> our morning adventure over, Chloe dropped me back off at campus. She was so sweet, uh, and she said she had been the best week of her life, despite everything. That made me feel so awesome. Chloe really sees us like we're taking over the world. But what if I hadn't had been able to use my rewind powers to get her off the tracks? Chloe might have to lower her expectations, and so will I. Speaking of expectations, David Madsen stopped to talk with me without being a total prick. I thought he was going to bust me for taking the heat for Chloe's weed, but we just talked a little. And for the first time, I kind of felt sorry for David. He is a veteran. I know he probably saw awful things in combat. He said he doesn't want to fight with Chloe or me. But all the shit he's pulled in treating Kate like she's a suspect just makes it hard to get along. But I promise to try for world peace. Something odd happened, as if everything happening isn't bizarro. But I saw Kate having a tense conversation with Mr. Jefferson, and she ended up practically running away from him in tears. I wish I could have casually asked, oh, by the way, what's up with Kate? Like he would have told me anyways. I know, Kate's treat, I know Kate treats Jefferson like he's an apostle or something, so what did he say to make her so upset? Just when I was feeling good about Chloe and me, I walk into Jefferson's class and see Nathan and Victoria actually sitting on my desk. Unreal. Asshole bookends. Kate Marsh almost killed herself. My hands are still shaking, but I have to write this down while I can. Right at the start of Jefferson's class, Kate went out... Uh, Kate went to the roof of the girls' dorm to jump. Every student and teacher was watching her, like it was a Blackwell rooftop concert. I actually saw her jump, but I was just about to you able I was just able about able to use my rewind to get her back on the roof. Uh, I tried harder than I ever did, and somehow I stopped time completely. I made it to the roof, but again my head felt like it was going to blow up. I knew that I couldn't just keep rewinding to save Kate. I had to try and talk her down on my own. She was already in so much pain over the video and all the bullying, so she wasn't going to buy everything I tried to tell her. You see movies with people trying to talk somebody out of suicide, but it's very different when I'm the one doing the talking. I covered everything I could, and Kate almost jumped anyways. Cliché or not, I told her how much her friends and family love her, even if they don't all show it now. Lo and behold, Kate stepped back from the ledge, alive. I almost cried in her arms. I know this isn't about me though. I have to admit, it was an amazing feeling to walk arm in arm with Kate from the rooftop to outside the dorm. Like I said, the whole school and police were watching us, almost completely silent. Then I heard what sounded like Logan yelling out, give it up for Max! And everybody started to clap and cheer. Talk about surreal. The people who ignored me or treated me like crap suddenly crushing on me. That might be the strangest thing that's happened to me in this insane week. And that made me wonder if Victoria was watching and how she felt about all this. I almost wanted to find her just to get in her smug face for enabling Kate's suicide attempt. Such cruel bullshit. Though to be fair, Victoria wasn't the only one that was responsible. Nathan Prescott seemed to have disappeared, which was probably a good thing. After all that, I still had to talk to the police and give a statement. 
Felt so weird to do since I've seen it in pretty much every police procedural show. I had to lie my ass off when he questioned me about the other students because I just don't think the police are ever going to find out what happened. Yes, this looks like a job for Supermax. Right. Though, of course, I do love it when Chloe calls me that, even if I don't feel that every day here, even if I don't feel that every day heroic for helping Kate down, maybe it's wrong for me to think that I have to feel anything but grateful that Kate didn't jump. What was really odd was when all the students and faculty and staff surrounded me and Kate, then started patting our backs and shoulders like we were heroes. I wasn't sure how to respond, considering Kate almost threw herself off the roof because everybody at school, because like, but like I said, I can't blame everybody. And I still don't really know where to point all my fingers. The very best thing was even though Kate was still in tears and confused, I definitely saw her smile. Uh, once she realized how happy everybody was that she was alive. I smiled too. The police and paramedics swooped in and then Kate was recovered in a blanket and gently escorted to the ambulance. They didn't thank me or look at me like I was a hero. I guess they're used to saving people without applause. But if I'm super honest, it felt pretty cool. Like I got a hug from a whole school. So maybe Blackwell Academy isn't totally bad. It's not enough that Kate is alive. Uh, and though I'm not enough of an egomaniac to take the credit, I still had to get the Blackwell third degree from Principal Wells. It was bizarre to be in this tacky office with Nathan Prescott, David Madsen, and Mr. Jefferson calmly talking about why Kate would attempt suicide. I was quiet but giddy inside, just replaying in my head the moment when Kate stepped towards me with a glimmer of hope in her eyes. Part of me wanted to smash Nathan's smug face against the desk, knowing he had a lot to do with Kate's suicide attempt. I thought about doing it, then flipping a quick rewind, but I knew, but I knew that would be the start of a bad, dangerous habit. That's really good for her to identify that, actually. So, fortunately, Principal Wells amazingly did the right thing and booted Nathan for a few days. After I told him what happened in the bathroom, he must have more shit on Nathan because otherwise, I doubt this would happen to a Prescott. That's some small justice for Kate. There'll be more if it's the last thing I do, which is uh, which it could be if I'm not careful. It's true. After being grilled in the principal's den, I hung out with Warren on the lawn so I could finally feel grass under my feet and watch the fluffy clouds. He's such a sweetheart. He kept telling me how proud he was that I stopped Kate from jumping. I don't believe that I did, but I have to say it's better to be treated like a hero at school than a to be a loser. Still, I told Warren that something ominous is happening at Blackwell Academy. Rachel Amber, Chloe, and now Kate have all been victims. Not to mention me, but keep playing amateur de detective. Wish I could have let Warren know about my power, but it's not the right time. As if anything is the right time anymore. And to make the day end on the most surreal note possible, the sky went dark. I watched a solar eclipse that was not announced on the news or any astronomy site. What is happening to Arcadia Bay? October 9th! Dear Diary, I have the power to rewind time and I ended up on a rooftop trying to save my friend from jumping off while trying to prevent the possible destruction of my hometown. I fell asleep at my desk and woke up reaching out to rewind or grab Kate. I remember when my journal entries were about which anime character I wanted to be or my dreams of being a respected globe hopping photographer or what me and Chloe would do, uh, be doing when we were finally adults. At least we know how that turned out so far. Chloe is determined to get to the bottom of what's going on. So I've been playing what would Chloe do, which means blowing off my Blackwell homework to research everything I can to find on Kate Marsh, Rachel Amber, and the esteemed press gods. It would be too easy peasy if they were all connected, but at this point, I think the whole town of Arcadia Bay is connected to the crazy shit. I can already see the story on the National Geographic channel. Mystic, scientific, or apocalyptic. The Arcadia, the Arcadia Bay tornado. Speaking of fear, I still think about Kate and the sadness in her eyes on that roof. I'm so grateful she's alive. I love seeing the students of Blackwell show their support for her with gifts and flowers. Finally. At least I feel better now that Nathan is suspended. It's good he's off campus for a few days. I hope. And like I give a shit if the Prescott family sends a team of lawyers after me. Please, I doubt they would all like the publicity. I doubt their tentacles reach into the rest of Oregon. Not yet, anyways. Leave it to Chloe to make me sneak out past curfew and demand I meet her in front of the main building in the dead of night. I know Chloe would be all over investigating the campus after what happened to Kate here. This just makes Claire, Chloe more desperate to find out what happened to Rachel, if anything. 
It's funny that even though I think I can just rewind myself out of trouble, I'm in more trouble now than ever be, uh, before in my life. If this was a Twilight Zone story, I'd be getting set up for some serious irony. Like I'm going to rewind myself out of existence or something. Can I honestly say that I'll have this ability for the rest of my life? Are the tornado, the snow, the eclipse just hallucinations or are they genuine prophecy? More importantly, is this a curse or a blessing? Chloe is alive and by my side and that has to be a miracle, which means there must be a way to stop my vision from coming true, right? So yes, I broke curfew to hook up with Chloe and she said she had something to show me. Looks like it's time for some serious detective work. Enter the Blackwell Ninjas. As I stealthily waved my way out of the hall, I passed by Kate's door and saw the nice messages from the other students. Too bad most of Blackwell didn't care when they passed around the video and bullied her to that roof. Everybody always cares when it's too late. At least Kate will see that people are on her side, finally. I hope I can visit her when all this blows over. Maybe that's not a good choice of words. Damn, that was too close. I was doing so well until I got... Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make sure I didn't like skip like five pages again. Damn, that was too close. I was doing so well until I got outside. And of course, it was Principal Wells of all people blocking the way. The one person I least wanted to see, uh, I wasn't ninja enough for him. So yeah, he busted me. But I finally got to see that gossip was true for a change. Wait, what? Principal Wells busted us? No, he didn't. He didn't catch us. We, we avoided him. Principal Wells was shit-faced. He didn't even try to hide it. In fact, he was a lot cooler drunk than sober. I can see why he's so confused dealing with Kate's family and the Prescotts and David Madsen. He still acts suspicious and gives him way too much tear, as he would like to say. Nobody says that, seriously. But I can see that he's under a lot of pressure. So much so that he's wasted, he can't even use his keys at midnight. Sure, he was in my way, but he was no match for my rewind power. After all, I had to go and meet Chloe. Bad Max. Wait. Did she say he busted her and then she, he didn't? I'm all messed up here. Even though I thought I was in full ninja mode, Chloe still scared the shit out of me, which pissed me off considering what I've been through. Sometimes she's so damn insensitive to other people's feelings. She wants all my attention for her and finding Rachel and she gets all butthurt if I don't have time for her. Obviously, I have time in hand, uh, but I can't stay mad at her for long. So she was damn excited about having the keys to the main building. And honestly, I was pretty amped up too. Even more so when we went to the front of the building and spied on Victoria talking smack about me. And worse, actually trying to blackmail Jefferson to pick her photo for the everyday contest. She is freaking unreal. Also, she was trying to like hook up with Mr. Jefferson. I give Mr. Jefferson major respect for telling her to get lost, even though she deserved to be expelled for pulling that crap. This is her priority after what happened with Kate. I just don't understand Victoria, no matter how I try. She's already rich, pretty, and a good photographer. Why try so hard and hurt so many to manipulate everything already in your favor? I just hope that's not what I'm doing with my rewind power. Yes, there's something incredibly awesome about breaking into your own school at the witching hour. Although Chloe was technically right. How can we break in with a key? No, that's not technically right. Never mind that. It was a stolen key from the school's head of security. Uh, anyways, the Blackwell ninjas strike again. So cool to stalk the halls when it's dark and quiet, even with so many terrible things happening all around us. It felt like Chloe and I were walking towards the center of a great cosmic mystery, something bigger than any of us. But we kind of suck as master spies since we didn't have a key for the principal office. No worries. With my rewind power at hand and of course, Dr. Warren Graham, he came through with a bitchin' mini bomb that made of sodium what the fuck ever. <laughs> I probably learned more about putting those ingredients together in the entire sem semester so far. Sorry, Miss Grant. Warren is the star student here. He tries so hard to help, maybe too much, but what's wrong with that in these days? I'm so grateful he's on my team. Talk about being in the Sancto Sanctorum. Thanks, Latin class. <laughs> I did feel freaking weird about being in the principal's office after midnight, going through his files and laptop with Chloe. She was way too into it. Technically, we could be arrested and thrown in jail. I just pretend that we were on a very special episode of The Wizards of Waverly Place. You know, just a couple of wacky Sherlock's investigating the school for a good cause. Yeah, that helped. Well, we didn't find the proof we found Nathan's file had a weird drawing in it that just said Rachel in the dark room over and over. So that's a major clue that Nathan is involved in this somehow. Or he's just insane. 
but his note also, re also referenced David M, which means that I absolutely have to find a way into David's secret bunker files for a good cause. But Chloe just can't help herself, and she actually wanted to take five grand in cash marked handicap fund. Because that's got to be legit, am I right? I can't think of a faster route to karma hell, but it would have paid off Chloe's debt to Frank. I stopped her, but it kind of bothers me that Chloe can be so selfish like that. I'm not going to let anything happen to her, but I just can't let her do anything she wants. Mad Max? More like Mommy Max. Despite all the usual breaking in and blowing off, uh, blowing up office hijinks, Chloe decided what we needed more than anything was take a night swim in the otter's lair. I was so giddy and rebellious that I was like, oh yes, we shall swim. We didn't completely skinny dip, but close enough to get in big trouble no matter what. I don't know why we were so careless after being so careful. I love that Chloe brings out the just don't give a fuck side of me, even if it hasn't always served her well. She deserved the moment of not giving a shit. Me too. Just two friends goofing around in the pool. I fear those youthful shenanigans might soon be a thing of our past. God, I'm starting to sound like one of the teachers here at Blackwell. Chloe and I have a nice chat about our lives since I left. Uh, we talked about dumb boys and girls and why they're trouble, especially for me. I feel like a groupie when I talk to Chloe about our life experience. She has me so beat. I take pictures. She takes action. Speaking of action, we had to seriously bounce when security showed up. Uh, how quiet could we be in the swimming pool after leaving a trail of our Blackwell hand? Plus, after leaving a trail of our Blackwell handiwork, it was so intense and exciting to get past the security guards. They had serious spotlight powers, so it wasn't exactly easy to stealth our way past, especially as we had to bail in Chloe's junker. But like I said, intense and exciting. Hella like Chloe Price. Um, okay, so we're all caught up on the reading. Okay, we're good. Um, we got a couple more faces to read here. So Joyce, talking to Joyce Price after five years was almost as intense as seeing Chloe again, especially right back in the ye old Two Whales Diner. That clinking of silverware and the smell of sizzling bacon rewound me to being a kid, hanging out there with my parents for breakfast. I remember her always smiling at Chloe, even in mischief. Uh, doubt she smiles at her hijinks now, but they still banter like mother and daughter. I moved to Seattle so soon after William died that I never saw how it affected Joyce. I'm glad she's not pissed at me for being selfish and never looking back. I still remember the last time Chloe and I saw him alive. I wonder how often Joyce relives that day. That's the worst kind of rewind, the one you can't control. But if I could go back to that moment, what would I do? I can only imagine how Joyce ended up with David Madsen, talking about opposites. You can tell she loves him, disturbing as that sounds. Maybe she just wanted to be a more structured life for herself. Obviously, it didn't work out that way with Chloe. I hope they both treat her right. Joyce deserves the best. Uh, and then we also have a thing for Frank. I'll never forget Frank, if only because he's the first and last person I will ever aim a gun at. How did Chloe end up in this sketchy drug dealer's orbit? The weird thing is that when I first saw him threatening Chloe in the junkyard, I was more shocked how uncreepy he looked. I expected some try-hard gangster, but he looked more like a dumpster diving troll, which I guess he kind of is since we're on his turf, testing out my rewind skills for Chloe's amusement. Uh, though he looks like a serial killer, his vibe, aura, energy, whatever, uh, was bad. I could literally feel the hair on my arms prickling. He wanted the money Chloe owed him, so it didn't make sense that he would hurt her, but I wasn't going to take a chance. So yes, I actually threatened him with David's gun. Ridiculous. Fortunately, none of us ended up like Reservoir Dogs, and I saw that Frank maybe isn't as scary as I thought. But I don't want Chloe near him ever again, since he was wearing one of Rachel Amber's bracelets for whatever the fuck reason. I doubt Chloe will be partying with him anymore, but he's at the top of our suspect list for now. Oops! Um, and then we got a couple texts from Warren, and that's it. Okay, we're almost ready to play the game. You guys ready? Um... Glad you didn't blow up Blackwell last night. Almost glad. By the way, the drive-in is actually popular right now, so I'm buying the tickets now. I'll have an extra one in case you change your minds. Oh, Warren! Warren! Dude! Okay. Um, okay, we gotta get dressed, right? We gotta get dressed and go get some breakfast. Ew. Still Ew. reeks like a chlorine factory. Oh, man, no one's gonna know that. Uh, I guess... Find a suitable outfit in my fashion hole. Okay, we're gonna wear some punk rocker. Today. No, no moshing today, never mind. 
Uh, okay. Also, I've seen Randy in the chat. What's up, Randy? How's okay. it going, dude? Welcome. Time for some Chloe cosplay. Some Chloe hey, cosplay. Rachel left a bunch of her clothes with me. She's your size. But not quite my style. Max, you don't have a style yet. At least give it a try. At least give it a you try. Can always rewind back to your chlorine brand t-shirt and generic jeans. You suck. <laughs> I like my shirt and jeans. But it would be cool to try on Rachel's clothes just to see if they fit. Stop second guessing yourself, Max. Put this <laughs> on and let your inner punk rock girl come out. You can afford to take chances whenever and whatever you it's want. It's like to an try. outfit until we get back For to example, our dorm room. I dare you to kiss me. What? What? I double dare you. Kiss me now. I mean, whatever. Damn, you're hardcore, Max. Now I can text Warren and tell him he doesn't stand a chance. Unless he's into girl and girl action. I he can't see him. Dork. I can't see him being into that. Oh man, that was priceless when I kissed Chloe. She didn't think I would. I just did it for the irony, guys. Just for the irony, pure irony. Yes, this is the scene where we listen to Bright Eyes. That's where I was I was trying to think of um, the music. Looking sick, Max. A couple tats, some piercings, and we'll make a thrasher out of you yet. Ready for the mosh pit, Shaka Bra. Shaka Bra! Maybe not. I don't know what that is. Go on down and say hi to Joyce. Free breakfast? I have Free to, breakfast, uh, baby! I have to get high before up. I get out of bed. Let's not rewind and find out, okay? Oh, I gotta get high before I get out of bed. Let's go. Okay, oh let's go say God. hi to Joyce. That smells so amazing. We got a Kate text here. Um, Max, thank you from my heart for reaching out to me on the roof. You're the only one who was there for me at school. The only one who truly cared. I have to believe that you were sent to give me hope. You did so much more than that. My father is grateful as well. You'll always be in our prayers. Love and blessings. Your friend, Kate. Hey, Kate, I'm so glad you're okay. I will visit you as soon as I can. Promise. Wait, didn't we say we got a text from... Okay, wait, I just want to check this. This was sent at 8.07. And where is Warren? Ah! I answered Warren's text first. Although I got Kate's text back. Yo, there is some time shenanigans like going on here. Kids here. <laughs> I answered Warren's text. We got Warren's text at 814 first, and then we got Kate's at 807 after. Okay. Yo, what up, Joyce? Good morning, Joyce. Rachel. Uh, I, I mean, Max. Oh, you startled me. Well, you fit those clothes well. Thank God you're not a hellraiser like her or Chloe. Now tell me exactly what you want to chow on. Oh, man, I'm freaking hungry. Eggs and bacon, Eggs baby. Eggs and bacon all the way. Remember when you guys would sleep in until I yelled out, wakey, wakey, eggs and bakey. Totally. We'd wake up so fast. So this time you can help me with the ingredients. I need uh, you to grab me the actual eggs and the bacon. The ingredients for eggs and bacon? What I do I need to get for you? Bacon. Okay, there's eggs. The eggs always come first, as Joyce used to say. And bacon probably in the refrigerator. I should evolve and become a vegan, but... Oh, bacon. I should evolve and become a vegan. I mean, I, uh, like I said, I, I'm currently, like, but even in my own personal life, I'm trying to substitute, a, like, a lot more meat happened. meals it's with vegetarian and stuff-related foods. Again. Uh, or vegetarian, vegan dis dinners and stuff like that. I don't think I could ever be like a full vegan. So I like cheese and stuff like that and eggs and stuff, girl. but um, you know, it's really good to be able to have those substitutes. I'd love to think it's that a good too, idea. Joyce, but we are on the same page, Max. I just want the best for... Show up or even send a message to Chloe from Hollywood. Or wherever she is. Wherever she is. Be honest, Joyce. Do you think Rachel is okay? God, I hope so. She was, is smart. And she always landed on her feet. Maybe I don't know her as well as I thought. Maybe Chloe doesn't either. 
Sometimes I feel like I don't know Chloe as well as I thought. <laughs> Max Coffee. <Kalki. laughs> Are you actually jealous of Rachel? I mean, yeah, a little bit, I think. Maybe. I think Max is a little bit. Rachel was so much cooler than me. <laughs> you think? Then why has Chloe been telling me she wishes she could be more like you over the past five years? Doubt it. Um, did she really? <laughs> five years ago feels like a thousand now. And that makes me what? A century old? <laughs> You're only 18, Max. Okay, a century okay. is more than a thousand yeah, years, Joyce. It's not all that. I don't want to put the cliche. Voila. I don't want to put the cliche that queens. she's working in a Anything. diner, but. <laughs> Go sit at the table. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, we're going to sit at the table. Uh, I guess I'm going to sit here. Nice place. Just beer bottles hanging out on the table. Who keeps their peanut butter on a jar on the table? Okay, I'm glad that's butter. creamy and not crunchy. Whoa, Max. What? Crunchy Thanks all the so way. The plant here. Also, so there's much, another Joyce. dinner there. It's like a donut I'm on the plate. I'm never leaving this table. Good, you can oh clean. Oh my gosh. Good, you can clean. Well, no, 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 no. I want to, no, I just want to eat. You keep feeding me. I never leave because you keep feeding me. Oh man, this is something so magical. Just about, you know, a couple eggs, a couple strips of bacon. Oh, creamy peanut butter eats all. Wait, you didn't even eat all your food. Bacon to my belly. What? Okay, what's in the newspaper? Oh, man. I don't want to be famous for this. Uh, well, you don't have to be famous for that. Okay, how do I leave? I'm done. I ate food. I looked at the peanut butter. I looked at the I plants. I guess nobody waters the plant here. Yeah, it's a pretty dead plant. How do I leave? Hello? Joyce? Seeing you again? Ah, oh, made me remember so much. I know these photos don't measure up to your work, Max. My favorite photographers probably take pictures similar to yours. You make David happy, Joyce. He wants us all to be happy, Max. He's just not great at showing it. That's true. I like I said, I uh, think David I think it can rock this outfit like Rachel. You have your own <sighs> style. I think David just wants the best for everybody, you know? Wow, sir. I totally remember that day. Well, what what is this day? I'm glad. William took this picture with his instant camera. <laughs> and now we're using it. Oh, <laughs> hey, got it's it. the last picture he ever took. He had his car out right after this. And, and I know, Joyce. I'm sorry. I didn't show you this to be morbid. In fact, I want you to have this. This was when my baby was so full of life and light. She was hopeful, positive, and everything she's not today. And you know what's crazy? Even in that photo, you can see Chloe Chloe's face. Happy. Oh, you talking you shit about me? Bonding session about how fucked up I am? It's not always about you. Chloe, please. It's too early to start picking a fight. Eat instead. I'll keep the warden busy while you go peek in the garage. Now stop whispering or I'll know you're talking about me. Stop being so nosy, mother. Jeez, I can't do anything around here without everybody getting up in my shit. Whoa, you no pay no fucking rent? You, Chloe, you fly off the handle like that. Excuse me, I have to use the bathroom. Sure, run off and pee when you should back me up. Now, who's This is her paranoid? cause in the scene. Just listen to yourself. Nobody else does. Okay, here we go. Okay, we know there's security footage here, so we need to be hiding shit. Okay, so we have a laptop, but last time we checked the laptop, there was a password on it, so we can't bust into the oh, I guess maybe we have to look at it. Okay, we gotta use the laptop, but there was a password on it last time. No shit it needs a password. How about step douche? Try again. I need more clues. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we gotta find some clues here. Let's search the cupboard. Who the fuck leaves clues about their password lying around? Here. Let's be honest. Corned beef? Eww. I don't know what that one, Chief. Okay, we'll check the cupboard here. Go. Maybe I could try stepdad for the password. 
I don't think that's going to be it. Boy, I'm so happy you were born today. Thanks for bringing me into the family. Love, stepdad. That was only just last year. Greetings from Arcadia Bay. Okay, we could try stepdad, but I don't think that's going to be it. Naturally, David would buy a heavy-duty military padlock. I think I Max also gives a lot of shit. That might be a useful password. Yeah, 7171, possibly. I also don't think it's going to be a four-digit password, Nothing though. Okay, so the cameras are turned off right now, or at least the television that uses the cameras is turned off. Uh, Chloe can't get another gun now. Unless she steals it back from Frank. Okay, we're going to turn the gun rack off. Let's just keep looking around, because I don't think it's 7171 either. Maybe this ID number might work. That would be more likely, but I still think probably not. It's like 4500 zero, zero, something, 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 something. Uh, I could try the license number for the password. Yeah, okay, so like, that would make more sense still, like... I'm just trying to think about like, cause like your security ID tag, okay, it makes sense because the security Looks ID like tag, David but then this a lot. he would have had a password before. He, he would have had a password before he was a security guard, right? Coming back home, a veteran's guy by Lieutenant James Edward. Okay. A plane, a license plane. Dude, can't picture David driving Joyce around with this. <laughs> Hog just married. Uh, there's a tape. Obviously, David's parents care about him. That date might be a good password. A video message from mom and dad. Who sends video messages anymore like that? Even like back in the day. A knife? Call Even that a David knife. Madsen might be an angel. To my field angel. Else. Keep your wings up. What did that say? What did she say? Uh, sun visor. Yeah, check the sun visor. Joyce might as well have wrote, let's get married. Uh, what is that? It was an honor having you at the, in the diner. Nice to know that gentlemen still exist. Love to talk with you again soon. By the way, the name is Joyce, if you forgot. It might be a useful password. That is pretty cool and kind of cute. Uh, she charged him even after that cute little message. Okay, we have like nine different passwords we could try. Now the car looks ready to roll. This is a better hobby for David than surveillance. Hell yeah, it is. What about the license plate on the front of the car? Tread City or something, TRD, something, something, something. No? A trophy? Aw, oh, man, hunting trophies. David has been dragging his head around since 2001? Yeah, I'm not big on hunting. Uh, <laughs> okay, I think we got most of the stuff here. What's in the I door still here? Need to find the password oh. to David's computer. Okay, I think we checked everything. Let's see what we got here. Uh, let's go pers Let's go family, and let's go with um. I don't know. Score. Whoa! The hacker strikes again. First Whoa. try, baby. Alert. I don't even know what Rachel that day was. Definitely hooked up with Frank. Uh, Rachel has been cutting cross all David week. Care? Frank and Rachel meet once again. Uh, Rachel Amber, 18, was picked up at 2.35 p.m. at Blackwell for possession of a controlled substance. This was reported by David Madsen, head of campus security, who witnessed her trying to hide or secure a suspicious medical bag. This uh, officer was called into question, Miss Amber, who responded with threats, of den threats and denials. Uh, her bag was found to contain various illegal pharmaceuticals. Instead of stalking Kate, David could have helped her. Overheard Kate and Dana talking about her supplies for Vortex Club Party. Drugs? Watch Kate with her church group. She knows her Bible. Kate stays in the bathroom longer than other students. Drugs? Saw Kate helping Jefferson after class. Don't trust go grown men with goatees. <laughs> Fair enough. Kate has kept to herself since Vortex Club Party. Not even church? Is it drugs? It's gotta be drugs. It's drugs, right? She's on drugs. She's on drugs? She's on drugs. Tried to talk to Kate about the party. She got upset and ran. Guilty. This is so wrong. Oh, creepy. Mad bastard. Max. Max Factor. Noir in gel. Uh, he's got my schedule here. 
Okay. So we didn't I really see Chloe anything. About this now. Okay, is there anything uh, we can do to like more thing to make her sad? And is there anything else I can do? Like, can we rewind well, now and just like spoiler alert. Rachel definitely hooked up okay, with Okay, we right? we caught with that. But why does David care? Okay, can we rewind to using the laptop? Okay. It's okay. We but we attempted a password attempt. Sorry, I'm just rewinding all this because I don't want David to know I was snooping on the fucking laptop. So we're gonna, we're gonna rewind basically everything from when we got in here, if we can. Hopefully it doesn't mess Max up. You know, it was really a cool uh, comment. Seven Sins had said something. Um, Okay, yeah, 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 okay. Seven Sids had commented on the YouTube video and said, hey, uh, I wonder if, um... Wow, you were gone for like two seconds, Max. Yeah, it's because I'm a witch. <laughs> oh, they're... Oh, he's still got the security outfit on. Nice he's still rolling breakfast. it. David, you, you back already? I have to take a nap after writing up vandalism reports last night. What happened? Some little shit ass punks broke into the swimming pool. Did they this change is his what voice actor? These PC bullshit colleges. Entitled students taking over the campus. I think they do changed you know his voice sure actor. It was Black Whale students. Who else would do it? And I'm gonna bust them. Nah, I'm positive it's a different voice actor for David. Between different episodes? 100%. <sighs> Figures you'd be here. Is that your Rachel Amber Halloween costume? You know more about her than me. No, you and Chloe think you know more than anybody, like all teenagers. Leave Max alone, David. Stop threatening students. He threatens them oh. with surveillance cameras so he can spy on everybody, like he spies on all of us here. Don't start, Chloe. Not now. Yeah, I'm just always starting shit, right? You're a total paranoid, David. Not now, Chloe. He used to call me a loser for getting kicked out of Blackwell. So who's the loser now, David? Who haven't you accused or harassed? Between your oh, investigations no. and Rachel and Kate, I don't like what have this. you done besides get in trouble? I'm side with David. Fuck you. Listen, we don't know that David did anything, and nobody has any proof against him. As far as we know, it's Nathan Prescott who's the real threat so far. Just back I'll off with David. Oh, would you? How generous, King Max. So suddenly it doesn't matter how shady David has been acting. Or that he keeps all those weird files on your classmates. Or how you're always going off on how creepy David Enough. is. Enough. I don't want anybody being accused of anything. There's the guy might be a... that crap going on around here lately, and I don't want it in my home today. Well, I agree with that. Now, if you all don't mind, I'd like to forget about work and sit down and eat some of this incredible grub. I have to take a dump. Are you coming, Max? I have to take a dump. Are you coming? Maybe I went too easy on David for Joyce's sake. No, I went on it for his sake. Thanks again for defending me, Max. But this is my family now. I, like, I don't want Joyce. Like, I, okay, listen. Guy's a bit of a creep. I still think he's got the best intentions in mind, and I'm not going to fuck with it. I got to stick with my gut on it. Thanks for letting me down again, Max. Why can't you just rewind so I don't have to see you defending that asshole? Why don't you go fuck yourself? Stop talking to me. Leave me the fuck alone. Just get bent until you get a better fucking disposition. Listen, when I went through David's laptop, I found pictures of Rachel and Frank being more than friends. <laughs> right, no way, Max. She was just posing to tease Frank. If you're not gonna believe me, why don't we check out what Frank has in his RV? What's that gonna prove? Frank has Rachel's bracelet. What else does he have in there? Motherfucker better not have anything for his sake. Yeah, for his sake. If Rachel didn't fall in love with me and Let's fell in love door. with Frank, Frank gets he's dead. And he sometimes forgets to lock it. What is that he's eating? Is that just a plate of beans? I can't believe you hung out with him. Not anymore. We have to be casual ninjas here. 
Casual ninjas. Don't mind me just breaking into okay, an RV the in the middle of a I'll parking go to the lot. I'll distract Frank by telling him I have his money, but he needs to come with me. Then you come in and rewind so Frank doesn't see me. Then you can tell Frank he needs to check out his RV, and then you rewind after you get the key and, uh, and... What? Chloe, I got this. I'll be right back. Don't let my epic plan get in the way of yours. I hear dog. I hear the dog growling. To distract his mangy mutt. That's a Scooby snack. Gotta find a quick and easy way to snag Frank's keys. Scooby snack. Okay, we got a message from Dad. Uh, Pop here. I'm sorry I haven't gotten in touch sooner. Uh, I know your mom is very proud of you for saving that girl, as am I. We have no doubt sending you to Blackwell was the best thing you ever demanded we do. It makes us so proud to read about you in the news, the actual videos of you walking down the roof with that girl. If you want to come back home now to relax and maybe go to a high school around here, the door is wide open. Love, Pop. Thanks, Pop. It's been a whirlwind here, but I'm not ready to come home yet. Talk later. Max XOXO. <laughs> uh, heck yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, no, no more messages. Okay, how are we going to get these keys from Frank? We have to go in the diner, right? We have to go interact with Frank. Because he's he's gonna have his keys. Good lord, bacon! Bacon! I'm ready to nosh again. Oh, I'm also ready. I need to get those to keys eat. from Frank. What the fuck I am I doing? To see what would happen if I did this. I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, that's probably not a good idea. What are you doing, you idiot? I thought she was going to spill it on the ground or something. He was going like, to reach over and pick it up. And we're going to, like, take his keys or something. You have serious balls, little girl. But hanging out with Chloe, playing with guns, and dressing up like Rachel doesn't make you cool or tough. What the fuck do you want? Take a picture of me and I'll break your fucking camera. How do you know these are Rachel's clothes? Because she looks beautiful in them and you look like ass. <laughs> I just took that gun from you. Grab your keys and let's check out your RV. Let's not. You fucking creep me out. <laughs> you creep me in out. In other words, Max, no keys. <laughs> Maybe I could chat up that officer. Or even Nathan. And then go all Groundhog Day on them until I get the info I need. Where's Nathan? Is Nathan? Who's Nathan? Oh, Nathan Prescott's here? Oh, shit. Rachel. Uh, whatever the fuck. Uh. Oh, look. Max Amber. Nice outfit. <laughs> By the way, thanks for getting me fucking expelled, you twee bitch. You're lucky this is a public place. Ah, got Considering you. Considering we're in a public diner with a police officer right over there, you shouldn't advertise your rage, Prescott. Oh, yeah? You shouldn't have bitch snitched on me to that fucked up principal. What do you want me to do? I bet Frank hooked you and Rachel Amber up with party supplies. Nice try. Rachel partied like a fiend on her own. More than me. More than me? That. Like you would know, Virgin. Yeah, that Virgin. I know Rachel hung out more with Frank. I mean, don't talk to the cop about that, dumbass. Try interrogating somebody else, <laughs> Lieutenant Caulfield. <laughs> I mean, don't talk to the pig about that, dumbass. What did you say? Talk about there the cop? There she is, Super Maxine. That's your, That's new, your nickname new nickname around the bay. around the bay. Sorry, but you did earn it. We're all real proud of you for helping me <laughs> out. Thanks, Dude, Officer. These Bain. interactions are wild. I was just lucky. And right on time. Kate is who counts. I'm glad you're representing Blackwell Academy. Okay, let's go. Uh, weird town. No, we're just going to talk about Rachel and Frank. Nathan said that Rachel Amber represents... <laughs> Nathan Blackwell said! ...with Frank Bowers. Bowers ain't no student anymore. Sadly, he does represent one side of Arcadia Bay. <laughs> stay out of his orbit, okay? Him and that rabid mutt. I heard something about Frank Bowers and his puppy. My boy does love his dog. Especially when the dog is your personal drooling bodyguard. You can bet he trained that poor thing on blood. Gross. I wouldn't bet. Where did he get the pup? Frank used to Damn. bet on dog fights. 
Now, to his credit, he had a revelation. He saved a bunch of the dogs, kept one for himself. He's still a creep. You and that Chloe stay away, all right? right? Okay, so what are we gonna do here? We talked to Frank about the dog. Save dogs. You act so scary, but you did save all those dogs. One, I'm not acting. Two, who told you about the dogs? It's actually well. I talked to Nathan, who told me to talk to the police officer. Could I pet the doggy? I could go grab him from your RV right now. I won't even let you pick up the dog shit. Damn, bro. Besides, you don't want a leash. You want these keys right here. Look at your eyes dilate. You're worse than a junkie, Max. But no fix for you. Well, he thinks we want to get fucking high. <laughs> he thinks we want to just get high. I mean, my eyes are dilating for the keys, but not for the same reason. Uh, we're just going to take them. I'm afraid I'll have to take your keys now, asshole. You did not just do that. Give me back my keys, bitch. He just watches her walk away with it. Now. No, rewind, rewind, rewind. Zoop. Key brought. Now back to Chloe. Okie dokie. I mean, he did. Oh, wait. Was that after he put the keys on the table? <laughs> oh, what's up, Alyssa? You stupid. I guess I gotta rewind and tell her to watch out. Hey, yo, move backwards. Alyssa, watch out. Okay, Max. Quick thinking, Max. She always sounds like she got like caught in her mouth. She's quick thinking, Max. Anyways. Okay, we got keys. Did she get a food? A puppy treat? Oh, she got like a big old bone. That's kind of cool. I should have known. The amazing Spider Max. We're gonna I get in there. Wait, can we just steal all the Frank well, stuff and then sell account. it back to him, and we'll get even on the bargain deal? You'll need this, Max. Yeah, this doesn't on seem fair. Get set. Throw. Throw towards the road. Throw in the parking lot. Throw in the parking lot. I'm not throwing towards the fucking road. Jesus, we'll kill the dog. We just made that dog our bitch. Get it? Now we can snoop him. Throw it towards the road? Not Are we a time. sociopath or something? <laughs> Stupid the dog. dog. Is busy now, <laughs> he might come back. Okay, well, if he might come back, let's get in the freaking thing and get it done. Dude, who actually does that? Damn. I thought my room was a shithole. You're Ultra creepy, death. Frank. Frank has issues, but he's not creepy. At least I didn't think so until I saw him with Rachel's bracelet. Chloe just can't seem to handle the... Again! Oh, we could cruise everywhere in this bad boy. It's the Chloe show. It's all about Chloe. And beyond. Yes, we'd be tearing up the highway. And you'd probably want me to kiss you again. Chloe, we're on a schedule. We need clues about Rachel. Yeah, quit fucking around. I know. Just daydreaming. Oh, well, I thought Rachel was this big deal. What, now we kissed you and now, now you don't give a heck about Rachel? Sorry, lady. That ain't the deal. You scope the area while I hack his computer for info. Well, I hack the computer for info. Okay. Frank okay, clearly. is almost a made-for-TV hoarder. Prescription this pills. This place is nasty. Too bad I don't have my Frank Bowers decoder ring. Uh, this is just like probably people who owe him shit. Photo? Okay, what's this photo? That's almost cute to see Frank posing with his dog. Hell yeah, it is. It's just like very like normal. It's it's crazy to see these people in wild situations and circumstances, but uh, to see them still like normalized afterwards. What's in the cupboards? Hello? Ooh, Frank's stash. Wow. Here, Chloe, like tapping away over there. I'm no hacking the computer, guys. Uh, okay, let's go. 
Hey, <laughs> nice desktop background. Gonna this take is the knife. almost as good as a set of keys. Yeah, it's, I mean, some situations better than a set of keys. You just gotta know how to use it, right? Get a lot of places with the knife. Oop. Oh, the knife it? broke? Nothing here. Oh shit, the knife is broken. Yeah, let's not, let's leave the broken knife. Oh, there's a blowtorch on the bed! What are we gonna do with this? That's a pretty extreme lighter. <laughs> Blazing up on the bowls. Oh, I still have the knife. Okay, well, whatever. Uh, dog food, dog food, dog bowl, more cupboards. There's Presto, Chloe's gun. Should I give it back to her? Leave the gun alone. <sighs> For now, I don't. I don't I know if we're this, but I can't let Chloe hurt someone or get hurt. That's true. No, nope, uh, no. I just like I don't want Frank to know we were here. Like that's the big deal. I'm trying to like keep my tracks covered. Uh, what is that? Candy bar, baggies, the hi-fi, dude, the high fidelity. What is this book? Is Frank going to deal online now? A noob's guide to web business. Yeah, maybe he wants to better himself. Shut up. Why are we got to be so rude? Is that a Super Nintendo controller? Is that an 8-bit dough? It's taking days to download the porn. Yuck. It's got to be an 8-bit dough controller, right? Super Nintendo controller with, like, the, the Wi-Fi cover, the Wi-Fi thing on it? My oh, we can go on this vent here. Portal. Boink. Oh, we didn't break the knife this time. Okay, let's take a look at this. This is Ledger. Oh man, Rachel and Frank's dog. Mm-hmm. I don't know if I should be touched or disturbed. Frankie B, if you read this first thing in the morning, though she's got like very Disney writing, right? Sorry about last night. I was being a monstrous bitch and took it out on you. And poor Pompadour. There's a lot of weird shit going on in my life and sometimes I feel like I'm never going to get out of Arcadia Bay. Thank God for you. You're one of the best things I have here, and I smile when I think of us together. Let's just drive out of here forever. Love you always. Rachel Amber. Chloe's gonna react very well to this. I'm like glad we just Rachel got it. to drive this beast. She looks genuinely happy. Rachel really did hang out with Frank. I'm learning more about Rachel than I want to know. Ooh, baby. Hmm. Trouble in paradise. Frank, that was not cool what you did. And don't blame the drugs. You actually scared me, and I thought you'd never... I want to chill out. I've never seen you act that way, and the next time will be the last. I'm a Leo, and we don't look back. I care about you. Us. So maybe we need to break our routine. Oh, wait. Yeah, Chloe's going to be totally fine with this. It's from 2013. Uh, okay. That makes me ill that Rachel posed like this for Frank. I wrote him love letters. I can't believe she was banging Frank. Rachel straight up lied to my face. Why didn't she say anything? Because she knew how you would react. And she wasn't much of a friend, Quite huh? Quite well, right? Just another person who shits all over me. Mm -hmm. Why does everybody in my life let me down? My dad gets killed, you bail on me for years. My mother gloms on a step fucker. Now Rachel betrays me. Chloe, Rachel is missing. Nobody betrayed you. Bullshit. You totally defended Steph Stalker. Fuck everybody. Chloe. Fuck. Okay. Well, I mean. <sighs> okay. Real mature. Yeah, he's not going to put two and two together. Also, this guy in the parking lot just watched us go into that trailer. Well, I guess it's turned the other way, but... Why is he not concerned that his dog is out of the trailer? Chloe, you can't keep blaming me and everybody for everything wrong in your life. It's so not fair. I gotta blame somebody, otherwise it's all my fault. 
Fuck that. Oh, yeah, there it is. There it is. Grow up. Grow up? God, you're not the only one in Arcadia Bay with problems. Kate Marsh almost... Yes, Kate Marsh almost killed herself. Such sad, okay? That doesn't make me feel any better about my fucked up life. Get it? So who do you most want to blame? My fucking dad, of course. Hello? Yeah, he had to go and fucking die. It's all you his fault. William? Really? Yes, I do. Damn right. He chose to go out that door and leave me forever. Chloe, your dad didn't choose to leave you. I know that, Max. My mom actually blames herself. Just because she wanted a ride home from work. Sometimes, even I blame her. No, you don't. Yes, Max, I do. Okay. Do you know what it's like to wait for your father to come home when you're a kid? No. And he never does? I no. don't. Of course not. But I was with you that day. It was just a terrible accident. I wish that made me feel better. But ever since he died, my life has been dipped in shit. I can tell. You don't want to hear this, but you're still here. Alive. With me. And that is no accident. You're right. I don't want to hear this. Chloe, oh, you big I fucking crying. I can't do baby. this out on my own. I need you with me. And Rachel needs you. Don't you ever bring up Rachel! Dude, I don't know. Hey, get out of my truck. I'm gonna go complain and make every... I'm gonna go shoot somebody and I'll be the victim. Alright. That's cool. I'm not even worried about preserving things with Chloe because she's such... I don't know. I, I honestly I have no respect for that kind of person. She's victim. She's a victim her whole life. She blames her dad for getting in a fucking car accident. She blames her mom for her dad being in a car accident. The girl she loves loves somebody else, and now she's like, oh "Whoa, we butterfly affecting." What is happening now? What? This is like straight out of the movie The Butterfly Effect, right? Looks at the photo and I think we're gonna go back in time, right? <laughs> Use A and D keys in the left mouse button and right mouse until you find the sweet spot. Okay, that was too far. Okay. Wait, what? What is this? And the left. Oh, I had to like focus. I had to refocus with the left. Okay. That was a weird little mini game there. Yo, what's up, Somebody William? I'll get one of them newfangled computers. I hope the flash didn't scare you, Max. This is a keeper. Not until this is first. a keeper. You know the rules, Dad. Max, tell him. Whoa, hey. You look totally pale. Are you okay? Yeah. I just... Uh, Yo, that's wild. Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, Chloe. Give me the thumbs up or thumbs down. Well... I might just allow this one into the family album. You're the boss. What is this? But not the cook. William can't is here. Can't daddy. Yes, and we can't Chloe is just a kid. And serve us slackers. Am I that far back, back in time? You mean pancakes? We are. In France, they call them crickles. I'm 18 years I'm old inside my 13-year-old self. If you want to eat. How? Super Please. weird. I volunteer to break the eggs. Wee oui, wee. Oui. Do you remember how many eggs? Photo. Now I get to take a picture. Strike a pose. Make me a star. Just Dude, it's crazy. Up. It's five years ago, but you can still see, like, Chloe in the character's face. It's kind of cool. That's true. So, how many eggs? Don't you dare question the chef. Right. Like, you're the real cook here. Yes. What a mess we made. Oh, those are all the pictures that we found in the drawer before, to too. Kind of cool. Okay, magazine. 
Look, what is this? Oh, yeah. I miss movie nights here. Cookies and popcorn. Cookies and popcorn. Let's get it. Yo, there's another Super Nintendo controller. Wait, is that a Super Nintendo plug? That's a Super Nintendo controller Whoa. plugged into a PlayStation 2. Hey, honey. Just making a fabulous breakfast with Chloe and Max. We're all going to work at the Two Wheels. What? We're all going to go work at the Two Wheels. Oh, I didn't know you had to get groceries. Of course I'll come pick you up. Now of course I'll come pick you up. Be there shortly. Love you. Oh, it's so I have sweet. to stop William from taking his car today. I have to go rescue yonder. Okay, I gotta stop William from taking the car today. Many bags of delicious grub for us to feast you are upon. ridiculous. <laughs> You'll be grateful for that someday. Shit, where are my keys? That's where are your keys? Blair, you mean your college fund? Keys, please. Yo, this is so wholesome. William's so wholesome. Where are the keys at? Uh, maybe if I can find them before him. Uh -huh. Hey! You can't hide from me forever. Okay, so we're going to rewind time. What does it mean? That was the X. I couldn't even like I couldn't even do anything with it. Wait, I took the Mom's photo? No, friends. I That's true. So I gotta take the eight? photo still. Now I get to take a picture. Dare question the chef. Right. Like a real cook here. I could call Joyce at the two wheels diner and warn her. If oh, I, I don't have the phone number. Okay, unplug the phone cord. Boom. Disconnected. Now he won't get the phone call. Can I still hide the keys? Search for the keys. Score. Yo, get it. Like, this is dangerous stuff, though. This is basically like... And we'll hide the hey, keys honey. in the vines. He's never going to find... I have no idea why the home phone didn't ring just now. What? I'm just making a fabulous breakfast with Chloe and Max. We're all going to work at the two whales. This man's got a cell phone. Oh, I didn't know you had to get groceries. Of course I'll come pick you up. Now I'll have an excuse to get a I know I've seen those pictures before. Dude. Be there shortly. Love you. Oh, dude, he's so awesome. It's it's wild. Excuse me, ladies. I have to go rest. How much mess do you make making pancakes, William? Many bags of delicious grub for us to feast upon. Look at this mess. This is wild. You're ridiculous. You'll be grateful for that. Son. Don't worry. He won't find the vase. Shit. Where are my keys? That's a dollar for the swear jar. You mean your college fund? Keys, please. They're not here. Guess he can't go. Sorry. Yeah, but like this is like messing things up. Like this would be like shit. Where are those keys? Can I just Another like not hide them and? The swear jar. You're bankrupting me. Can I just like not hide them and? What? I knew this thing would come in handy. How did my keys get in here? And no clue. There's no Max way. Wine tasting session. Dad. Don't blow it, because tonight your mother promised to make us a world-famous salmon surprise with chocolate cake for dessert. Max, you'll be here too, right? She's never leaving me. That makes all of us. Wow! The foreshadowing! That makes all of us. I have to us. try. I have to. I was put here to use this power to save William. For Chloe. Anyways, what I'm saying is like this is very dangerous. It's like butterfly effect kind of stuff. Because... I mean, what's going to happen is like, That's a dollar for the swear jar. we're going to stop him. Fund. We're going to stop him from going, but then like something bad's going to happen to Joyce. The ways paper, we can't hide them in there. I have no idea why the home phone didn't can't hide them in there. I'm just making a fabulous breakfast. Can't hide the cookie. He's got the beeper. Work the two whales. What? Oh, I didn't know you had to get groceries. Of course I'll come pick you up. Now I'll have an excuse to get Draw on the fireplace. Be there shortly. Love you. I'll be able to find that in like the future. It's kind of cool. Excuse me, ladies. I have to go rescue That's a butterfly. Dude, we can't hide the keys in there. Oh, yeah, we gotta... Oh, whoa. Throw the keys out. You are ridiculous. So You'll be grateful for that someday. Shit, where are my keys? Okay. That's a dollar... That's a dollar for the game. Yeah, something bad's gonna I happen. Knew I had those keys right here. I know it. Forgot all about you, little buddy. 
Release the keys. Of course. Last time I ordered from Spy Guy Electronics. You is that ironic? Bus, right? The stop is right down the street. This I can do. Good call, Max. Oh yeah, the bus is great. It comes every 15 minutes and there'll be plenty of room for you and joys and groceries and... The bus is going to fucking get hit and she's going to wipe out a whole bus of people. You sold me already. I'm off to yonder bus stop. Uh, Joyce will love this. Bye. And then now Chloe will just be like, oh, it's your fault. You convinced That's him to take the so bus. That's fucking strange. You feel okay? Chloe, I am awesome. We are Yo, what's up, Chadley? Thank you for nine months of your sub, dude. Okay, the photo disappeared. Yeah, this is like a scene right out of like, uh, this is a scene right out of the butterfly effect. Okay, so we're altering history. What? Woo, baby. Nice birthday photo. Here, let me get a picture of you guys fighting. Ta da! Well, we still got a trunk. Now we're gonna have to live in this wacky world? Okay. I gotta check how long this episode is running. I feel like we've been recording for a very, very long time. Uh, we're getting kind of close to the precipice of how long I want this to record. So just see what happens here. Yo. Hello. Are you even listening, Maxine? What? My friends in LA told me that Oregon was Max. Cold every day. But Never, Maxine. I know. Sorry, Mad Max. <laughs> You're not pissed at me, right? Right? No, You're not Do pissed you at me, right? Yo, Victoria's our bitch. Max is hot. She's acting like so weird. You cool, Max? Taylor's Nobody talking to us. Whoever this weirdo Courtney, is is talking to us. Courtney. Like whatever, bitch. Warren, he hooked up with Stella. Cool story. It was a little emoji on the oh, shirt. No. Th this is totally fucked up. What? Else what? Has changed? Dude, it's so wild to see like everything that's changed. <laughs> Chloe didn't probably didn't get expelled, right? She'll be like full nerd mode. David Madsen's a bus driver. Dang. Dang. Oh, is this the end of the story? Is this the end of the chapter? Kind of cool if it is. Be like perfect timing. The only reason I felt it run really long because I did a lot of reading at the start of the episode. So. What? <laughs> so wild, man. <laughs> so wild. Wow, let's see how this uh, turns out. So we changed the history. We changed history, right? David Madsen's now a bus driver. At least he got a, least he got a job. You know, he's working and stuff. That's kind of cool. Yo, this Brooke. What is this, the eclipse again? Oh no, it's a whale on the beach. Is it a whale? It's a whale, right? It's huge. It's like just like a completely beached whale or one. Oh, two, three. Yeah, this is better than an eclipse. All right, let's see what's going on here. This is Joyce's house. No junker in the front yard. Or Chloe's house, like it's like where Chloe lives, Joyce's house where Chloe lives. Let's check it out. 
Are we even friends with Chloe anymore? Open up. Holy shit, it's him. Just cut to black right now. Just cut to black right now. I remember this. I remember this. Fuck. What? I like, I only just remembered it at that time. I was like, wait a minute, something happened to her. And then it like flashed together. Chaos theory. Chaos theory. That's where it's at. Oh. Wow. Only 52% of people left the money. 40 stole it. What the frig? You kissed Chloe. I figured why not? It wasn't like it was like a sexual thing. It was like whatever, right? Uh, you sided with David. I did side with David because I think that he's got good intentions. I hate that he's got a new voice actor though. Uh, you kept Frank's dog from harm. You 5% of people threw the bone into the street. You guys are sick. And Frank has David's gun. It's better for Frank to have it, honestly, I think. Uh, Lisa is alive. Lisa is dead. Lisa's alive. You helped Warren with his exam. You didn't help Warren with his exam. What the frick? I didn't even know you could do this. We are on the Vortex Club party list. You erase names from the party list. Heck yeah. Uh, you didn't erase the cop's message. What? You helped Alyssa? Yeah, we did. You warned the homeless woman of what? Took a photo in the past. And you left a mark in the fireplace. Um. All right, next time on Life is Strange. We're at the Vortex Club, baby. At the end of the world party. So clearly we didn't keep the, the past the same way. The dark room. God damn, Rachel's in the dark room. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, huge shout out. I really appreciate the love and support. Um, I'll catch you guys next time. Be well, stay awesome, do great things, be good people. I love your faces, and I'll see you next time. Bye, guys. Oh,